Hey, welcome to the Tales of a Gearhead podcast. I'm your host, Stacy David. This podcast is brought to you by LMC Truck. Keep them on the road is their slogan, and they supply the parts to help you do that. Also, Cornwell Tools, the choice of professionals, and hot rods and enthusiasts alike. If you want quality tools, Cornwell's the place to go. Let's get to it. All right, this question comes from Sherry, and she has quite a dilemma with her 67 C10 Chevy truck. Well, here's how the question goes. She says, we have the 67 Chevy that we showed for years, and we found out that it had rust in the floor pans. She said, so my husband cut out the pans, and he thought he had it braced correctly, and then, unfortunately, he passed away, and it's unfinished. And she says, now the right door won't open, and we think the cab is twisted. She said, I was wondering if you could tell me what I could do to fix it. She said, some people are telling me that the cab is ruined and have to be replaced, but I don't think so. First of all, Sherry, so sorry to hear about your husband. I know that's a, that's a tough deal right there. But fortunately, you have the truck to remember him by. So let's get to the truck question. Now, obviously, as I've told people before, if you watch the show, anytime that I've chopped tops or channeled bodies, stressing up the body or the cab is very, very important. The fact that this hasn't been done, we'll just step over to that and go to, okay, here's what happens. When you cut out the floor or the structure of something, it will want to bend. If you just take an old Pepsi can or a Coke can and empty it, of course, and then just kind of twist it and squash it, that's kind of what happens to the body of your vehicle when you cut out the structure. So now you have to try to go backwards on that. So basically what you'll need to do, it's a little easier than doing it to a Coke can, but to true this body up is you need to put it on, on jack stands, you know, that are all equal, and you need to find where it's low or high or where it's moved. And you need to start using jacks and pries and try to straighten this thing back out. It is not an easy process. It can be done. That's really where you need to go with it. Now, if you can't get it straight, if it just keeps oil canning on you and moving and you can't get it straight, you can still salvage this cab. But now you need to basically just start over. In other words, you need to just cut it apart and jig it up. And it, if you don't know what a jig is, that's it's something that holds something in place. If you're jigging a frame or a body, it, it keeps it in place so it doesn't move. So you need to build a structure to hold that cab perfectly straight, and then you need to weld in new rocker panels and new floors, and you completely need to reconstruct the body. Very, very big job. About the biggest job that you can do when it comes to body construction, because basically you're, you're rebuilding a body. Obviously, there are tools involved, there's techniques, way more than I, can, than I have time to go into here. So if you can't find somebody to do that for you, then I would suggest getting another cab. Because here's the thing, those, those cabs are so valuable, those 67, 72 cabs, you can easily sell that to somebody like me. I'd buy a cab like that in a second because I can get it cheap and it's not that hard for me to straighten it. But for someone like you, if you don't have the tools and the ability to do it, that can really be a nightmare. And what you don't want to do is for somebody to come in and go, well, we'll just shim that up. Because once you start the shimming deal, you got to shim everything because the body's out of whack. So you have to shim the body on the frame and you have to shim the front fenders and you have to shim the doors and you ha everything has to be shimmed to try to make it straight. And it's just a never ending battle. You want to straighten the thing back up. I hope that helps. It's probably not what you want to hear. I know that there's some sentimental value here, but uh, it sounds like this is way more work than you want to mess with. All right, I've got a question here that's come in by several people. Um, so we're going to address this. Uh, I have a lot of people that ask, what do I look for for a project? You know, some people ask what's great for a first project vehicle. Some people are asking, how do I just get into a project? What do I look for? And that's one of the reasons that we did the whole restoration series with the level one through level five project. The first thing you need to decide if you're looking for a project is what level of project you'd like to do. You really need to decide that. 
I'll go through them real quick. A level one is just to get it running and drive it. A level two is a cosmetic and mechanical restoration. A level three is a resto mod where you're putting in a, a more modern engine into an older vehicle. A level four is a frame off, which could be a frame off resto mod or a frame off original, but it is a frame off. And then a level five is a frame off custom where you're doing all kinds of custom work and everything. And of course, level five is the most difficult and usually time consuming. Most people live right in the spot of a level two or a level three. That's what the biggest majority of people do. They'll take a vehicle and either restore it back original or they'll take a vehicle and do some modern things to it and turn it into a resto mod. So once you decide what you want to look for in a project, here's the things that I look for. Obviously, you want to look at the paint and the body and the engine and all that other kind of stuff and decide, does it run? Does it have to be rebuilt? Those are all things that go into this criteria if you're doing a level one, two, three, four, five. But the biggest thing that I look for is structure because the biggest thing to fix is a rusty, broken down body or frame. It not only takes the most skill, but it takes the most time. And a lot of people don't have either the ability, the tools, or the, or the room to pull a thing apart and restructure a frame and make sure it's square. So that's the first thing I look for. Is it just broken down? Is it going to be too much time and money to repair it? And it doesn't matter if the car is a 55 Chevy or a, a Packard or whatever. If it's just too far gone for you, you got to walk away from it. Because a lot of people will buy a rusty car like that thinking that they can just turn and sell it real quick, maybe make a few thousand bucks on it. I promise you, the next person that's looking at it is going to be looking at it the same way. So if you got it for cheap, chances are you're going to have to let it go for cheap because other people see the, the problems as well. And that gets into the whole flipper thing, which is not what we're talking about here. So if you're looking for a project, make sure it's structurally sound first. Make sure it's something that you can do. And uh, then, of course, the price becomes an issue. But that's the biggest thing. The rest, you know, the paint, you know, the drivetrain, those kind of things, you can put those together and kind of do those cheaper. You can get an old engine running and put down the road and enjoy something, but not if it's breaking in half because it's rusted. So structure first is what I look for, and then all the, the goo gaws, the extras, and stuff like that. So hopefully that helps you guys. Good luck to you. Get out there, find yourself a project and find something that is in your wheelhouse to do. And get her done and send some pictures, man. We'd love to see it. You know, one question I get asked a lot is, what is a great first project for somebody? And my answer is always the same, an old truck. For several reasons. First of all, they're cheap. They're easier to find. It's OK if you drive them around all beat up. And there's great sources for parts from like LMC. They carry all kinds of stuff, whether you're doing a custom build, if you're doing an original build, or you're doing a full on hot rod thing, you can find stuff in their catalog. So getting parts is not that hard. And they really support the truck life, which is if you've never been into the truck world, as you start to dig into the truck life, you'll see that it kind of represents Americana. So if you need parts, man, LMC is the place to go. Got a question here from Dominique. Dominique says, I'm looking to buy something at auction. Want to know what to look for. <laughs> How do I know I'm getting a good deal? How do you know you're getting what you're getting? Great question. Man, I wish more people would ask that question. All right, the first thing you have to do when you're getting ready to buy something at auction or off of eBay or, or any place is you have to decide, are you looking for a project or are you looking for a driver? Because you do look at these differently. So let's just say you're looking for a driver. That sounds like uh, what Dominic's question is. He wants something that he can more just enjoy and drive. So he's looking to spend something that's been restored because that's what he asks. OK, so let's dig into this a little bit. When you're looking at something that, that's been restored at, at an auction or whatever, ask as many questions as you can about the vehicle to the person that owns it. But <laughs> you can only put a certain amount of faith in what that person tells you. Here are some key things to look out for. If the person says, I don't really know, I'm selling it for a friend or it belongs to a buddy of mine, don't really know much about it, red flag should go up all over the place. Now he may honestly not know about it, but that's bad that he doesn't know about it. The fact that he's trying to sell it and doesn't know about it, that's bad. Usually that's a guy that doesn't want to lie to you. 
So he doesn't tell you any lies. He just says, hey, you know, I don't know. Another key phrase is, that's just an old car. You know, I don't know, it's just an old car. That's, uh, alarm bells go off to me on that one. And also, I think the engine's got about 30,000 miles. It's always 30,000 miles. <laughs> you, I kid you not, man. You go out there and people are like, yeah, it's got around 30,000 on it because 50,000 is too much. You know, 10,000 is too, in, too new and they know it's not that new. So they pick that spot right in there or they pick about 70,000. So they want to make sure you know it's over 50,000, but it's under 100. So once again, these are kind of things to be careful of that the person can, can tell you. Now, they may be legit, they may not be, but it's up to you to know and to figure out if this is really something you want to invest in. Okay, so once you get as much information about the vehicle, now you start to dig into what you're actually seeing. And first of all, is there any documentation on the vehicle? Is, do they have a project planning book? Do they have anything that you know, tells, that backs up what they're about to say. That's always important. All right, so now you're going after the overall look. How does the vehicle look to you? Uh, is the paint good? Has it got a good stance? Uh, what's the composition of the bill? Does it make sense? Is it like half original and half restored? And does it look like pieces were just added? Look at the vehicle and you'll be able to tell if it's been kind of hacked together by a, a flipper. Okay, so once you get past that, now you start to dig a little deeper. Let's go into the motor and drivetrain. Is there any documentation to it on what's been done to it, how long ago, anything like that? Are there leaks? You know, look for leaks around the engine and, you know, oil leaks and, you know, look at the exhaust. You know, you'll be able to tell if it's been running rich. Have the guy start it up. Uh, is there signs of jerry-rigging? And this is always a, a good thing for me. Look around the throttle, uh, the throttle shafts and the cables and the springs, because those are the areas where a guy will usually get in and get in a hurry, and they won't do those right. So they'll use coat hanger. And listen, if you if you're looking at a vehicle and it's got a coat hanger for a throttle to cable, there's some jerry rigging going on there. You you're just finding the little stuff. You have no idea what else has been hacked on this thing. So let that just be kind of an indicator of what you're looking at. Uh, once you've looked at that, look at the suspension. How's the thing sitting? Is there rubbing? Look at the tires. Have the tires rubbed? Is there weird wear patterns on the tire that would indicate alignment that is out? How's the, the caster and camber? You know, is it towed in? Is it towed out? You know, you'll be able to tell that stuff. Does it look like it's sitting level? Does it look cockeyed? You can pick up on all this stuff. You can tell if somebody's been in there. Uh, look at the bolts. You know, if they're crusty and nasty, but the vehicle is being touted as a ground up restoration, but you're seeing original uh, chassis bolts and things, mm -mm, has not been a full ground up. Those would have been cleaned up and either replaced or completely redone, sandblasted and painted. You know, one question I get a lot these days is where do you go to find quality tools? <laughs> That's a legitimate question because you used to be able to go down and buy them at the hardware store, but you can't anymore. But a great, great solution is somebody like Cornwell Tools. Not only are they America's oldest tool company, they've been in business 100 years, man, so they know what they're doing. It's the top level tools, but they also deliver right to your door. So all you have to do is get on their website, find out where a dealer is near you, and the guy will show up. You know, you can have him show up weekly, daily, monthly, whatever and he will take care of your tool needs. So if you're looking for quality tools, the best in the business, check out Cornwell, you won't be disappointed. All right, we're talking about what to look for when you're looking at a potential project vehicle. And the next thing to check out is the interior. To me, when I look at interiors, I mean, the painted interior is what people will clean up and make look good. So I start to really look for details in an interior. Uh, the edges of the door panels. Uh, how do they look? Do the colors match? Does the color in the carpet, is it consistent? Because a lot of these guys will paint the carpets or they'll repaint panels, but they won't do them all. So look for the edges, look for cracks around where the screw holes are. Just things that would indicate a little more wear and tear, just so you know. You can, you'll be able to tell, you know, if these things have been apart. These cars will talk to you if you listen to them. 
they'll, <laughs> they'll scream out, hey, here's what's happened to me, help me, help me. Uh, but you got to have ears to hear it. So um, on the interior, you know, look at the gauges. Do the gauges work? Are they foggy? Have they been worked on? Does the wiring seem to work right? Does it start, is the key loose? You know, those kind of things. Uh, then I go out to the paint and obviously most people try to get paint shiny and they think that that does it. And um, what you want to do is look deeper than that. Look down the body, see if there's waves in the body. Ask if there's been a repaint, but you'll be able to tell if there's been a repaint or not. Look in the door jams, you know, look for orange peel, you know, look for waviness in the body. Those are the first things you look at. But one of the main areas that I look at on a vehicle is the weather stripping. To me, I know that may sound crazy, but to me the weather stripping is almost like taking the pulse of a vehicle. And here's why. When a guy usually gets a vehicle and wants to just flip it, they don't want to pull the weather stripping off because they don't want to find out what's underneath it. And generally it pulls up the paint. So you have to repaint the vehicle. They don't want to do all that. That gets into restoration work. So they'll tape around old weather stripping or they'll get overspray on it or they'll, they'll jerry rig it or they'll put some silicone around it or something like that. And it'll talk to you, man. Uh, you'll be able to tell the bumpers under the hood, they'll be crushed down. You'll see, because that's one of those minute detail things that a restorer will not overlook, but a flipper will. So look at the weather stripping, see how old it is. A brand new paint job with original weather stripping is not a good sign. That means the car was just taped off and reshot. And that means there could be rust buried under something. If they don't replace the weather stripping, they sure as heck didn't repair any rust <laughs> because weather stripping is a whole lot easier than rust repair. So that's a good indicator. Uh, but look at that. You'll be able to tell what kind of detail. Now, sometimes, it's just bad workmanship. Sometimes guys will repaint a car, they'll put weather stripping on and they'll get overspray on it. But the edges and, and the fit and finish of things will be a big indicator between something that is a full restoration that you're gonna pay top dollar for and then just a driver that might have a, a cheaper paint job on it. Now I'm not saying if the weather stripping is bad, you don't buy the vehicle. It just adjusts the price you know, to where you can buy it knowing that you're going to have to replace that or there might be some restoration work involved down the road. And of course, the main thing you want to check for is body damage from wrecks or rust. So look for buckled panels, look for bent flanges, look for booger welds where somebody's just welded something back together. Uh, and some of the factory welds are pretty nasty. So, you know, just because it looks like an ugly weld doesn't mean somebody's been in there hacking. It could have been a dude on the assembly line way back in the day. But anyway, Hopefully this gives you stuff to look at. Let the vehicle talk to you and listen to the guy that's trying to sell it and then just make a decision on it. You'll, you'll do all right. Good luck to you, Dom. Keep in mind, this podcast is made possible by our friends at LMC Truck and our friends at Cornwell Tools. All right, that wraps it up for us today. It is time for you to get out there, start working on something, build something with your own two hands, send in your questions, send in your pictures, let us know what you're working on. All right, we'll see you later.